Hello guys, in this video we'll implement authorization with OPA Open Policy Agent using Rust. Open Policy Agent OPA is an open source policy engine that allows you to define, enforce and manage policies as code across various systems. Basically it decouples the decisions from application logic. Let's try to understand with an example. So let's say we have some resources on the internet and then we have clients who are trying to access the resource. In this case, it's get endpoint slash pets slash fluffy and the subject who's trying to access is allies. Now, in a protected world where we have resources that require authentication and authorization before we make the call to our DB or process the request in any of the use case or process that we have, we would want to authenticate and authorize our user and OPA just helps us in authorization. We make a HTTP call to OPA before making the call, we enrich our request with whatever the details required from OPA to make a decision. So in this case, this is the policy. If allies, then allow. So we OPA makes the decision and returns us true or false. Based on that, we either allow or we just uh, reject the user's request to uh, access a certain resource, certain data. So that's where OPA helps us. Now OPA can run as a sidecar. OPA or OPA, whatever you want to call it, as a sidecar or in a complete different environment or cluster. So I hope by now you are clear where OPA helps us or OPA helps us. Now let's try to understand why Open Policy Agent or why OPA. Now, as I explained using this example, those of you who have worked with authentication and authorization should have got this second thought. Why do I even need OPA or OPA? This is basically making a decision based on the data that I provide, which is basically just a condition. Why can't I just have this condition on my backend and I'm saving an HTTP request to my sidecar or wherever OPA is up and running for me. The problem with that is if you make the condition part of the code, it remains in the code and it lacks visibility to stakeholders, to people who don't understand your code. Now for them, the only way is to look into the documentation and we developers, we are very bad at documenting things. So basically at a point when we have too many endpoints, too many uh, endpoints having different ways of authorizing, maybe different sources of request based on that we authorize in a different way, then the visibility is very low and it at a time it comes when it's very difficult for even a new joiner to understand what's going on through your authentication and authorization so for that reason we shift the authorization part to opa or opa also once it's part of your code you cannot share it now other service who wants to use the same policies again have to rewrite the same code but if it's part of opa or opa then the the policies are separated, which we'll see in a minute. And all you have to do is enrich your request with whatever the data that's required to make a decision and forward it to OPA or OPA and the decision will be made for you. So yes, it does the job for authorization in a very clean and very organized and reusable way. So for that reason, a lot of development that goes around the world nowadays, especially those who use cloud or even uh, Kubernetes environment are using OPA or OPA as sidecars to their services or even in their clusters to authorize the users. So yeah, it's kind of a standard as we speak. Now to define your policies, you have to use Rago as the language, which we'll see in a minute and let's get an hands-on experience with rust where we'll spin up our own http server with axiom and we'll use opa to authorize our users we'll also write our own policies and discuss more so let's begin and as we begin there is a link to my discord in description we do tons of discussions there and i share lots of tips and tricks not just related to rust but everything that's going on in the industry so if you're not yet on my discord, then make sure you join. Let's begin. So first of all, make sure you have a nice and clean Rust project. Open the cargo terminal file where we'll add a few dependencies. Pretty straightforward. We need Axiom for our server. 
and Tokyo for async programming request for making HTTP calls to our OPA container which will spin in a minute and then we need Sarday for serialization deserialization and then we need Sarday JSON for JSON parsing now why do we need request because as we speak there is no reliable there are but there is no reliable uh, OPA SDK in Rust uh, there are a few but I didn't quite like how they operate so we'll make vanilla calls using request uh, client so make sure you add all of these dependencies once you have all your dependencies sorted move to the project explorer in the root of your project add a policies directory inside add a main rego now as we do uh, write the rego file in your plugins install the rego plugin if you are using rust rover but if you are using vs code or any other tool then make sure you install the rego extension uh, you will just get a lot of syntax help and code highlighting and all those stuff so in our rego file now just to make it clear this rego file can be anywhere it should not be always in your code if you don't want it to be in your code then it could be in a shared repository from where your uh, containers can have the access which we'll see in a minute from here we'll mount the volume to our container but again you can have it literally anywhere but just make sure your environment has access uh, it doesn't have to be closer to your code so now let's write our rego file so we'll just start with package as main and then default allow as false and then we'll add our first policy which says allow and let's say we are saying that input dot user is equals to admin will pass a user to the OPA and OPA will decide based on if the user is admin then only allow otherwise disallow similarly you can access as many policies as you want and then you can just access by slash man slash allow and now here let's say i want to check if the user is not just admin but any other as well then input dot user is equals to let's say developer so we can add as many as we want and we can add as many policies as we want but for now for just basic start we'll just keep it very basic and simple move back to the project and in the root of your project add a docker compose yaml file because as always in my videos we don't do any kind of installations we just spin up the docker instance so in this case we'll spin up the docker instance of opa or opa or open policy agent so services as opa and image open policy agent slash opa latest and container name as opa ports will mount to the default then we'll mount the volumes so volumes slash policies which is right here to policies and then we have to add a command which is run server and bundle policies uh, this is to load policies as a bundle and uh, this is to mount the local policies directory to the container and this is to run the server and uh, load the policies as bundle that's literally all that we need to spin up opa or opa and then just open your terminal and do a docker ps so we, as you can see we don't have anything up and running so now we'll just do docker compose up minus t for detached and as you can see it's up and running so we just do docker ps there you go it's up and running let's close it and we'll just move to our main and start adding our server and see how can we access our policies we'll add an opa middleware as well so let's get on with that 
So first of all, let's add a struct for OPA input. So OPA input, and I'll just keep this as sardejson value because we literally want to reuse this for any endpoint which need any other policy as well. So similarly, we have OPA input. Now we have OPA response which i as explained in the start it would be just a result uh, that's a boolean and we can derive uh, deserialize so we have opa response and now let's add the middleware so we'll just say async fn opa middleware and we get the request request so we just add request and body and then next next and in the result we return response with body or status code and now we have our opa url which is http localhost 8181 as we just add in our docker compose and then v1 data main allow so main the file and allow the package and the uh, policy so then we construct the request so let's say request and let's extract the users so let's say in this case every time we get a request from uh, to our server we want users to pass uh, x user so if we get some value in the x users header then value to str okay otherwise we just unwrap or and default to guest so if we get the user then we add opa input input and survey survey json uh, json and we just pass the user now to make this input as accepting json helps us literally pass anything that we want in future let's say we change our policy to accept any other things like maybe not just user maybe check on roles as well then we can just pass it along from here and then we add our client new and let response is equals to client dot post opa url and json and as input send await map error so if we get any error we just do the internal server error and if we get the response then let opa response opa response response dot j dot json await map error so status code as internal server error and finally if we have a good response then we'll just check opa response dot result if true then we want to process so next dot run we just forward the request and run whatever handler we have else we just do okay response builder so builder dot status as status forbidden and in body we just do is body from access denied 
and unwrap so that's what we sent if the opa says no or false so we have our middleware ready now let's add a handler so we have a protected handler of one of our endpoint you can add as many endpoint as you want i'll just stick with one endpoint and let return some static string that says welcome to the protected world and then we finally add our man Tokyo man and then we add is app router new and route protected get protected handler and we add a layer of our middleware from function which is opa middleware and once we have our middleware as well we'll add the listener tokyo net tcp listener let's say we bend to 0 .0 .0, 0 0.0.0 3000 and await unwrap and then here we can print we can add logging as well but i'll just stick with print uh, or let's say server is running it and listener dot local address dot unwrap and finally we serve listener app await unwrap so that's literally all that we need to spin up our server and we have our system up and running we have a upa that basically test our policies now let's first of all run and test our application let's remove this warning so back to our terminal and here we'll just do cargo run quite so as you can see we have our server up and running on port 3000 now let's test our policies, our authorization, our access control uh, by sending a request to our protected resource and see how does it work. So I'll use Insomonia for that. HTTP, localhost, port 3000, protected, and we just make a request. By default, access denied because we default to guest. And in the headers, if I add X user and pass admin, now, I'm doing a header based authorization here but obviously in a in a more real world scenario we would you know uh, extract some details from our JWT and based on that we enrich the request and send it to OPA but my purpose in this video was to explain the integration with Rust and how does it work with a basic example so that's why we just focused on a very basic authorization as you can see we are through because admin is allowed similarly let's say a tester which is not part of our policy right now is not allowed now as you can see decision making is not part of your code and it can be reused tech order holders can just go through that rego file and understand what's going on there so that's what makes it pretty easy to uh, handle your authorization with opa or opa or open policy agent i hope you guys learn something new if you do like the video share with your friends i'll catch you guys in the next video with an other interesting topic. Until then, bye-bye.